Have you been thinking about learning how to use Blender, but you open the window and see all this and you get really confused? Well, I'm here to help with that. Hi, this is Kevin with Inventomark, and today I have a tutorial on the introduction to Blender. So this is Blender when you first open it, it looks like this. Actually, it doesn't have that window open. I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, first off, it starts off with just a cube in the center here. This is a, basically a 3D view of whatever object you want to create or anything like that. And your regular mouse button, when you click, you move around the 3D cursor. This thing is... Uh, I use it every now and then, but I really don't use it a whole lot. But it's, it's kind of weird that the uh, mouse buttons are kind of backwards. So to select an object, you actually have to right-click on it. And when you right-click, it selects that object and highlights it in a light orange color. And if you want to select more than one, you hold down Shift, and it will select more than one. And the last one that you clicked will be the brighter color. The other ones will be darker orange color. So I click the camera, the lamp, and the cube here. The cube is the last one I selected so it's lighter. Whenever you uh, select an item it also will be displayed in the area. The number three up here. This is the object box. It shows everything that's in the scene for the whatever you're working on. So right now the camera selected and I'll select the cube so that it's highlighted now and then I select that that's the lamp and that shows up highlighted there so when you right click on anything that shows what's going on there and number two let me go ahead and open that up again this is the navigation window for the object you use open that with the letter N and if you just press it it goes away if you press it back again it comes back on and I have the keys that show what I'm doing out here so if you get confused or anything just look it down here and you can see what what letters or what mouse movement I'm using but anyway so here's the cube and right here is the basic information for the cube right now it's at location 000 on the X Y and Z axis the Y axis is the green one the x-axis is the red one and the blue axis is Z and there's no line for the Z but there is for the X and Y I'm not sure why that is but that's just how it is anyway so the positive side is going to be whichever way the arrow is pointing so this is the positive Y this is the negative Y positive X positive or negative Y positive Z and negative Z and that just shows here on which where it's at basically like if you select the camera it shows the difference here where it's at it's negative six on the y so it's this way so that's negative and the other two are positive and let's go back oops, oops click the lamp on accident and go back to the cube and see that it's not rotated at all this is the rotation here you have zero rotation but if you look at the camera it's all it's rotated a lot except for the Y is hardly even rotated and the lamp here is also rotated and it's got all positive uh, distances on where its location is and just below that this is actually this just changes the mode for the rotation I just leave it on what it is at default because you can actually make it even more confusing if you use quaternions or whatever those are. I'm not sure what that is really. Um, but here's the scale. Typically you want to try to keep this at scale at one to one at all times. There's some programs like Unreal Engine where to import from Blender into Unreal Engine you have to have the scale of one thing a 100 times the scale and the other thing at one. It's for like animations and things like that with the skeleton or whatever when you're making like figures or vehicles or things like that. But that's 
a more complicated issue but down below that you have the dimension this is the one that you probably pay attention to the most beyond besides location and rotation this one shows the exact same size of it the item that you're working with the camera doesn't have it any dimensions really so it doesn't show up there nor does the lamp because they're not actual physical objects in the scene that you're working with only like the real basic objects that you're using like cube cylinder things like that those are the only ones that really have any sort of like mass to them basically so we start out with the dimensions this one's basically two by two by two these are called blender units and you can actually change these to imperial or metric or just leave them as blender use it units I like leaving it them as blender units because for 3d printing it works really well because these actually work out perfectly for millimeters so if it's two by two by two that means that it's a two millimeter cube and you can actually just click in there and change the number so if we want to say a 10 millimeter cube we just select that one change it to 10 or select that one change it to 10 and then change them all to 10 so we have a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter cube and that's pretty much what everything with the sizes it changes that's but that's not the only way you can change it there's also edit mode I'll get into that a little bit later and so let's change that back to just a five millimeter cube you can also tab just type in the number and tab to the next one and it will move to the next field or shift tab to go backwards that works with any pretty much any of these if you want to go to the next line and so let's look at over here we have the mark number four this is the properties window and I actually like to move this out a little bit from the default so you can see all the icons up here but anyway this is the properties menu and this shows basically the camera shows all the output settings like if you just want a picture or an animation or audio I actually hardly ever use the audio but here's the resolution of the picture that you want to create or the movie or whatever you're doing you can change this like if you're doing textures you want to change it to 1024 by 1024 and if you look over here the camera changes but I just want to leave it at the default for 1080p and this is for when you're rendering for different types of rendering this you can move this down if you just want to preview something really quick it's faster but I just usually leave it at 100%. And this this start frame and end frame, this is basically the same exact thing as if you move over here and look down here on this. This is your timeline where you have the play and stop back and forward. This little green line goes along. This is all the frames. And that basically shows what the frames are. And it, here you can change the frame rate to whatever you want for that to be and the aspect ratio I've actually never really done anything with that and over here it's just I never really ever use that these are all things that you can use if you want to make a the background of your picture um, completely transparent this is where you change it in the shading if you're just making a picture or even a movie if you just want nothing in the background and these all just change different outputs and if you're wanting to make a movie this is where you would change all these settings this is movies this is just images so right now it's set to PNG for the file setting so if you clicked on animation it wouldn't create a movie file it would actually just make every frame on its own individual picture you can actually re-import it as a movie that way with blender but that's what that does basically and baking and that's that's a whole other complicated thing that I'll get into at a later date but for now I'm just going with overview of what what you see kind of in front in front of you oh and on the navigation panel here most of this down below all these things if you scroll down you probably will hardly ever use these you really don't need you just need to focus on these up here for the most part to start out with and looking over at number five here this is the toolbar if you press T it 
opens or closes, or you can press the little arrow here. And T opens and closes the bar. You have uh, for the whatever object you have selected. This this is the same as the keyboard. I usually use the keyboard keys because you can actually uh, click these buttons and do different things with the the objects. Now, I hardly ever use the actual tools. The only ones I might use are smooth and flat to change the shading of it. If you want to change it to smooth shading, it goes back and forth. It makes it look smoother when you um, actually render the object is when you really notice a big difference. And if you click on the next tab to create, this just creates more objects. And there's all the different types of objects you can actually create with Blender. And on the keyboard, if you press Shift A, it's basically the same exact menu. Over here you have mesh with all the same things, curve with all the same things, surface. Actually, that, these aren't in there. The surface and the meatball and text is there, but most of these are all things. But th that's with Shift A. You can just add. And wherever, wherever you have this 3D cursor placed is where that new object will go to. It's like if we wanted to add a sphere right there, it went right there where that cursor is. And it shows up here also. So we added that. And it, you can also just say we want to put a a monkey head here. This is Blender's monkey. You've probably seen this before if you've ever seen any Blender. This is very common. And that's the monkey head. And if you want to focus on one particular thing, object in the scene, you, you want to press the decimal key on the keypad and it'll zoom in and focus on that specific item that you have selected. So say we want to focus on the sphere, we hit the decimal and it goes directly to that and the scroll wheel moves in and out. And to rotate around the object, if you want to go around it, you click the middle mouse button and hold it down and drag and that'll rotate around the object. But to set the focal point where you want the rotation to be, you have to hit the decimal point on whatever object you want it to rotate around. See if I select this object, it's not rotating around that because I didn't hit the decimal point. If I hit the decimal point on the keypad, it'll focus on that and then I can move around with that. And let's go back to the square cube and just focus on that. And the middle mouse button is the one that you'll use the most for looking around and moving. You can actually move around just like a web page or some, anything like that, an internet browser. All you have to do is press the uh, shift key and hold it down and scroll. It'll move the screen up and down. If you hit control, it moves it side to side. And if you hit control and shift, it rotates the whole screen. That one I hardly ever use, but it's useful sometimes because sometimes you're laying an object on its side and you need to rotate it. But otherwise, uh, the ones that I use most is actually holding down shift and then holding down the middle mouse button. You can move the entire scene, drag it around the screen. Move it around and drag it. Say if we want to get up here, drag it like that. and That's quite useful. And if you get lost and you don't know where you're at and don't know where anything's at, you can also hit the decimal key to go back to find whatever object you had selected last. And it just focuses right back on it. Next thing we want to look at is down below uh, is number six here. This is basically all the information for the objects or the scene that you're working in. Right here is another place where you can add another object. This is the same thing as the tab over on this side and Shift A. This basically does the same exact thing for all this. You can add whatever you want. You can add a mesh and do whatever you want with that. And this, if you have an object selected, you can do all kinds of options with this. But for me, I use I use the keyboard for selecting objects and moving things around and. It, I find it the easiest and here's where you change the mode of the object there's a whole bunch of different modes that you can use to manipulate the object and 
do different things with it. Right now I'm just going to go over the object in edit mode. Edit mode is more complicated, but it, it's necessary for a lot of stuff. And number seven is the timeline. I briefly explained that. Basically this is just the timeline. If you scroll in and out with the mouse pad, or the mouse, the middle mouse button, it moves it in and out or the stretches the timeline and if you click and hold it it moves it around just like the scene window up above and that's basically the basics for now I'll, I'll get started on the basic simple sh keyboard shortcuts that I use to move around the objects itself in the scene and in the next video I'll go in more in depth and explain that and go into edit mode and explain what that does a little bit more. Uh, for now though, the one that I use the most is the most common key is the G button. If you press that, you can select it and move around the object wherever you want. And if you don't like where you put it, you can use undo which is control Z. Just like any other program, it's, it'll undo whatever you just did if you don't want to do it. If you did something by accident and to, in order to select the object and move it around the mouse cursor has to be within the screen of where the object is it's like if I grab it and move it around I had the mouse cursor in there but if I didn't want to actually move it if I a quick way to undo it is just press the right mouse button it just goes back to undo it but if I say I wanted to move the cube around and I had the mouse cursor over here and press G it doesn't do anything because it's not it's thinking I want to press G in the individual window and uh, different things it'll do different things in each window there's shortcuts for in the windows are I really don't know what all those are I actually only used a couple of them on accident to <laughs> ruin ruin what I was doing but yeah you want to make sure your mouse cursor is in the window when you grab something so G moves it around and if you click down the middle mouse button it'll uh, snap it to an axis and you can actually see the little white line in the screen it'll select which axis if you click and drag the middle mouse button it'll move around and pick which axis you want it to move along so if you want to move it straight up and you let go of the middle mouse button and it stays snapped to that axis so any object if you want to snap it I use this all the time this is one of the most easiest ways to snap it to a, a thing otherwise you can actually press the letters X Y or Z if I press Z it snaps it to Z Y is Y and X to X and that's how you basically move around the objects that way and if you want to rotate it you press R and it rotates it all different ways and then you can snap it to whichever rotation you want as well so in the next video I'm going to go over views and how to change the view that you're looking at and how to look through it on the camera because that, that way you can actually look at it in perspective like it is right now or you can actually use orthographic to look at it straight on so it's completely fat and I'll explain